and we did a tutorial earlier this week in making it in traditional piecing but today we're actually going to foundation paper piece it so this is for the live well live strong quilt um, which is right here the original size is 60 by 60. it also comes in king queen twin and full or a bed runner size and this is the pattern for it you can get it at stitches quilting um, so what block we're working on is the shoe fly boundary quilt block. It's also a churn dash. But today we are going to work on the version that is the foundation paper piecing. And you can see this quilt block just right here in the corner. And there's 26 quilt blocks. This is the 20 inch by 20 inch version. So I'm going to show you how to make the teeny tiny shoe fly boundary quilt block. Um, it's a churn dash block too. And, but you can see it right here in the corner. So that's what we're gonna make today. And you can see this was all done with foundation paper piecing so that you have an idea of what can learn how to foundation paper piece. So um, that comes complimentary with your Live Well Live Strong pattern. In order to start, hi Mary, have a happy Friday you too. Hi Nina, it's so good to see you live, I love it. So this is what your sheet of paper looks like in the PDF that you download for the foundation paper piecing part of, part of it. I print mine off on a, a newsprint paper that just through my standard printer and I print it black and white. So, and you have a little one inch square here to go ahead and verify that you are for sure printed it off correctly at one inch square and that your pattern is printed off right. So we're working on the boundary block. So let me go ahead and flip my camera so you guys can see some of the supplies I've got here and we'll get started on our block. So these are the pieces that you're working on. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put this on top of the pattern so I can bring this up closer to the camera. So let me go ahead and bring this up closer to you guys. So we are, you're, you're gonna have three different sections of the boundary portion of the foundation paper piecing. So has, hi Kathy, it's good to see you. Has anybody else foundation paper pieced? And so what we're, what will you do is you stip, stitch on the top side of the paper and on the back side, you actually have your fabric and you stitch these pieces together. So you can see that by doing these, you're getting the, the actual boundary shoe fly block put together. I have this last piece to do, which is what I'm gonna do with you guys today. But I wanted to show you that before I did this, I went ahead and I wrote down the colors that I'm working with. So here's the larger block, okay? So on this, I can see that the colors are the lime and the charcoal gray, the teal, the red, and I labeled everything. So I don't have to think very hard as I'm stitching away. I can kind of just use my pencil marks to help me put that together. So let me go ahead and set this aside so it's not too noisy here. I'm going to lay these down and let's flip these over. So you can see I've got this section put together. This section right here is very basic. It's so simple. You just kind of sew the charcoal to the teal, the red to the teal, and it just goes real quickly. So, and I'll give you a, a kind of an illustration of that with this section right here. So this section is exactly the same as this one right here. All right. So let's go ahead and you can see on here the, uh, as you read a foundation, hi Madeline, it's great to see you. So there's a C1 section and a C2 section. So this is section C, A, B, and C. And we're gonna start with the C1 fabric, which is charcoal, okay? It's my dark, dark gray right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this behind the, the paper and charcoal is, and I'm using a solid fabric, but it's facing the back of the paper because I'm going to stitch on top and then teal is the next color I'm going to put because that's C1 and C2 so let's go ahead and line up our teal fabrics how is everybody doing this Friday um, and are you how was your week are you snowed in um, how is your weather are you have you been like in like crazy circumstances so you can see right here and I don't see my little um, card, but if we fold this back where we're going to use that stitching line, I'm just using one of my business cards because it was laying here and I always put that in every single one of you guys' packages. So you can use just a business card, but you can see I'm going to stitch on the stitching line, but you can see I've got about a quarter of an inch 
a fabric sitting right there between the teal and the charcoal gray. So now I'm going to take this under the sewing machine needle and stitch right on top of the paper where that dashed line is. And we can just go exactly where the dashed line is right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and stitch this. I'm stitching with a teeny tiny uh, 2.0 stitch length on my sewing machine. So you want to you want to actually sew with a small sewing machine stitch length. So you can see I've just stitched right across there between this charcoal and the teal fabric. We are now going to take my pressing mat and we are going to press this open. So let's turn this around and you can see that's what it looks like on the back side. So, and remember, we're just building this portion, which is just like that, of this little quilt block. So, I've got it stitched right there. Now, what we're going to do, which is pretty simple, um, is we're going to use my little, use any little card that you've got. I think, I don't know where my little um, cardstock card went. So, here I am going to lay this down on my next stitch line. I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to just trim this so that I've got a quarter of an inch seam allowance over on this side because I'm using really larger fabric. One thing that can be frustrating as you're stitching away is if you've got just too much fabric. I mean, is if you're too, too short of a length of fabric. I'm going to fold over this side because we're, we're kind of starting in the middle of a foundation paper piecing block. Um, hi, Laura. It's good to see you guys. I um, am showing up early today because um, Betty gets her second vaccination. So I, my in-laws, I help take care of them somewhat. They live independently. And um, so Brant got his first vaccination on, um, Brant now has both of his vaccinations, but I have to help Betty get her second shot today. She has that appointment at 1230. Okay, so here we have these this little unit left here. And I just I use larger fabrics, but I've trimmed them off. So it looks like this right here. Okay, you can see how that's starting to mirror that because these are exactly the same. Let's go ahead and keep going. We've got we did C1 and C2. Our next unit is C3, which is Lyme. Hi, Dolores, it's good to see you. Have any of you guys been able to get vaccinated yet? I'm just so curious. Um, in the state of Utah, they've just put down the, um, the age down to 65 in the state of Utah. So Corey is gonna be able to get vaccinated sometime soon, he's 63. But we are carefully watching um, this and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, I'm now going to do C3, which is lime. I'm gonna stitch right up on top of here. You can see I've got my fabrics matching with about a quarter of an inch seam hanging off there. So let's go ahead and put this through. So Luke has gotten both of his shots and he will be, um, he'll be two weeks into it on Tuesday. So he should be vaccinated, we'll see. Um, yeah, way to go for Betty. I know, her second shot, so it's cute. But it is kind of a process to get her out of the house. She doesn't leave the house too often. Brant leaves every day, and Brant will be driving. So everybody say your prayers. He's 101. Say your prayers that he does a good job driving me today. Okay, so now this looks like this. I'm going to sew another portion onto this other side because that's, that's, once again, this line. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll do a story on Facebook of me taking them to get their vaccination. And you can see Brant driving me. It's not very snowy today. Okay, so here we go. Right there, I'm going to stitch on this side. But she has oxygen, so, you know, you have to make sure the oxygen machine is charged and ready to go. And then we bring our own wheelchair because I'd rather her not sit in the wheelchairs of you know of just like other people that have been sitting in them um they don't i don't i've looked and it doesn't seem like they're cleaning the wheelchairs very often during the vaccination they might be somewhere else that i just don't notice okay so here i know liz i know i know he drives me it, it was snowing this last week when i took him for his second shot on tuesday and i drove but then the roads weren't bad down in like Salt Lake, so then I had him drive me home. 
he's he's actually a pretty good driver okay so let's go ahead he's actually a really good driver you know what i mean it's really cute i mean it's amazing what they can do but you know anyways i don't know whatever right um okay now i need to just put this charcoal color on the sides of this can you see where we're going with this so i'm going to flip this over i'm going to use my little um business card but between C3 and C4, I'm going to trim off this excess teal. So let's go ahead and fold this back. And remember, I've already stitched a little bit right there. I'm going to have to pull back on those stitches. So let's lay this down. I like to do this with a piece of cardstock, a business card, say a postcard you get in the mail you can use. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put about my quarter of an inch seam here. So yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and post another picture. Picture, No, not one hospital here. They do not clean them. I, I cannot. So we bring our own wheelchair. But it's already in the back of their car. And boy, the process goes really fast though. But we they have to walk quite a ways. So Brant, he steadies his, his, himself on my shoulder because he can't, it's hard to walk that long. You know what I mean for him? And then um, let me trim off some of these excess threads. And, um, and then we push Betty in the wheelchair. Okay, so here's what it looks like. We're getting closer, almost done. Let's go ahead and uh, sew this right on top. I'm gonna put my gray because this is asking for the lime and then the charcoal gray. I'm gonna go ahead and line that up. So charcoal gray is just a really dark gray. I'm gonna stitch on the top, put the fabrics right sides together, flip it over and stitch on the back. Yeah, I'll let you know when I get safely back to Brant and Betty's. We have a lot of things that we have to do with stitches today. Lots of orders to ship out. Um, I've got an employee here. Vanessa is working. So I'm going to have to get right back over here. Okay, now we're going to trim off this excess fabric. See, we're getting really close. Then we'll sew these together. It'll be super cute. We'll have our little boundaries. Okay, now talking about boundaries. Okay, you guys. Now, maybe I should set a boundary with Brant that I drive, right? <laughs> right? Maybe I should set a boundary. But he drives by himself all the time. So I figure that's, that's a boundary I should set, right? Okay, but we're, we won't mention that. Yeah, th yeah. Anyways, here, here we go. Okay, now let me go over here. I'm sorry. Okay, but he drives by himself, so it's good to have one of us in the family drive with him to know how he's driving. So that's why I drive with him driving me because he does drive around town and get, he goes to the grocery store, he does everything. And so I figure it's probably smart for me to watch that. But we need to set, this block is all about setting healthy boundaries. So you, you want to set healthy boundaries in your lives with people and with your loved ones and with those out there around the world for, you know, anyways, let's trim off this excess piece and we'll be all put together. Okay, I'm trimming this off so I can see where I'm at and toss that away. Let's go ahead and trim this one. Let's stitch these together and we'll have our cute little boundary quilt block that goes in the, in the teeny tiny one. Okay, so, oh, this side needs to be trimmed. You can see I've got some raw edges there. So let's go ahead and trim that little section so it looks nice and clean, I think. I did that right. It's just a hair to trim off. Okay, here is how we are going to lay these out. I guess I could put these on this, this mat. I need to throw this little mat in the wash, though. Okay, so we are going to put these right sides together. When I put them right sides together, I want to match up my seam allowances. On the pattern, I have a seam allowance. You can see where your quarter inch seam allowance is. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up and make sure that our seams are matching. So that's something that we do need to do. Okay, boundaries. So where are places that we want? Yes, Lynette. You'll want that, the designated driver. I totally, yeah, yep, exactly, the designated driver. Um, I don't know. Okay, now I'm getting all nervous. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to sew these together. Places where we need boundaries. Wait, it looks like something is just a little bit off here. Let me check and see. I trimmed this one off too much on that side. Oh gosh, I was getting too busy. 
Okay, we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna have to fix that later. We're gonna just get this sewn together. Oh, that's the first time I've ever done that. I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, but we're gonna fix that. I will fix that later. Okay, look at what I did, you guys. Look what I did. I got too excited while I'm talking to you. I cut this one off where that quarter of an inch seam should be. See, I cut it off where the dashed line is instead of the solid line. Cut off my quarter inch seam. We'll, you'll see it in this next one, okay? Like this. See how this is too short right there? Look, I cut off my quarter of an inch seam. I'll go back and fix it. What a mini I am. Okay, all right, once again, let's match our teal into the center here and go like that. So boundaries could be set um, with family members. Um, for example, we don't want to pick up somebody's socks too much. So we set a boundary. Can you please pick up your socks? And that'll make me feel much better. Or, um, yeah, Pooh is right, Lynette. You're right about that. Okay, let me go ahead and stitch this on this way. So we can set healthy boundaries with people when we're feeling frustrated. We don't necessarily have to tell people that we are, but um, we can do different things. We can, um, we can go ahead and love people unconditionally as we set healthy boundaries with others. And it's our responsibility to sometimes set those boundaries with others and with ourselves. Okay, let's go ahead and open this up. Like, don't try to sew so fast while I'm doing a live. Okay, so you can see here is our little boundary quilt block. Let's press this. I got to fix it, though, over in that corner. That's too funny. I'll just have to unpick it and replace that little part. Sometimes when I'm dealing with paper piecing, I press the back paper, and I find that works out just fine. So you can see that. Okay, let's flip to the front camera. I've got to go run up to Betty and Brant's and get Betty to her appointment. So... Anyways, love you guys tons, and um, yeah, I'll let you guys know how I do with the driving and the appointment today. I'll do some little Facebook Lives. I love you guys. Have a good weekend, and I'll be back on Monday, and we're going to be doing the Belong Quilt Block. I had it right here. It's really close to me, but it is right. Oh, here it is. So the Belong Quilt Block. So it's definitely for our health and wellness to belong to different communities, and that makes us feel better. So Anyways, we'll talk to you guys soon. Love you tons. And